righty. So uh, thank you for the organizers for the invitation and uh, welcome on my behalf to all of you as well. So I'm, I'm Mika Kore and I'm trying to explain you what we, we have done here at HUS to pave the path, the rocky and slippery path for, for startups during the last couple of years. So um, I've divided the, um, the presentation to three sections and uh, first a brief introduction to Helsinki University Hospital and uh, then maybe a couple of examples of what we've done to create something new and uh, finally um, what the future holds and uh, what's in the pipeline in, um, at HUS. So first, you already heard, Risto told you a couple of, uh, give you, gave you a couple of figures of Helsinki University Hospital. It's a giant, so, so 23 hospitals and uh, all these figures considered. There's probably only one bigger uh, hospital organization in industrialized countries and that's the Texas Medical Center. But it de depends how you define the organization. But anyway, it's pr for sure one of the largest in the world. So, uh, in addition to, to the size, uh, we do have some assets which every single other hospital in the world is lacking. Uh, as you, some of you know, uh, Ginny Rometty, who is the boss or CEO of IBM, claimed this year at uh, HIMSS, HIMSS in the US that uh, big data, especially health data, validated and accurate health data, is today's and future's a natural resource. So if that's true, then we can say that HUS is truly a gold mine or a massive oil field. Why? We have close to 30 million patient visits stored in a data lake in a digital form, and this is highly accurate, highly validated data. And it actually covers more than 10 years, 100% of the visits is stored in our data lake. So every time you visit the hospital, you, we, we, can, we can store hundreds of parameters in a data lake and use that uh, by using your identification number, which is not available, for example, in US or in China. And then we have the biobank, which is, of course, also revolutionizing a lot of research. And through that identification number, we can fuse all data together and do big data, true big data and personalized medicine analytics and prediction models. And uh, uh, furthermore, you know, a lot of startups, they've struggled to get in, uh, come to the hospital and talk to the right persons. Uh, we believe you need to understand something about the culture as well. So, uh, you know, Hospital is a crisis manage, management organization, organization quite close to the uh, 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 army. So we do not tolerate mistakes. Uh, so, so we try to base every decision we, we make, every move we, we make uh, on a sound evidence. So if you haven't done your homework and you, if you don't present your idea in a very clever way, that has some rationality behind it. We don't really want to play around or mock around or just try something for fun. So this is a crisis management organization. We try to avoid errors and mistakes. Please remember that. And the second thing is the lean philosophy. That means that everything starts from the bottom, from bottom to up. So those who are actually executing the true through actions, your pilots and stuff, they are doctors and nurses. So if they don't buy your idea, then it's, it's, it's a waste of time that the admin will tell, like in old days, that yeah, this needs to be done in your department. So the nurses and doctors need to buy your idea. So that is the lean philosophy from bottom to up. So these are important things to remember. Then, of course, as mentioned already, Finland is, and especially HUS is highly academic, like all the other university hospitals, highly academic society. Once again, please have some kind of a scientific background supporting your idea, supporting your innovation, if you want to present that, that to, to our healthcare professionals. And then 
this is very crucial as well, especially for, for some companies and startups coming from outside, outside Finland or Nordic countries, in whose or at whose health is a human right of every single uh, a patient. And in Finland, in general, that's pretty much true, at least until 2019. And uh, this is not business. So if you only think about money, and you try to sell your idea based on, on monetizing the idea, probably not the best partner for your company. So, so we go health first, and that's important to know. So then we, we move on and go to the section where I'm trying to tell you what we've been trying to do to pave the path, as I mentioned in the beginning. So um, uh, we've uh, started the Findery, which is a new health and life science pitch community. But before um, proceeding, may I quickly ask you, so how many of you are currently working at who's as doctors or nurses, raise your hands. So four people, four people, maybe here's 50 people, I don't know, four people here. So what is the problem? The problem is that, you know, in these events, like this Upgraded Life Festival, Health 2.0, uh, all kind of uh, startup communities, we have the problem that companies and startups are presenting their ideas to other companies. And this is not taking us anywhere. So I, as I mentioned, the executive level is the doctors and nurses. They should be sitting here and listening what, what, you, what kind of ideas you have, what kind of innovations you have. And we've encountered and faced this problem so many times that we wanted to bring this startup event to the hospital campus like this very same biomedicum and we started in September and together with the help of Health Capital Helsinki and Helsinki Think Company so we've we we brought startups because the doctors and nurses don't really have so much time to travel around Finland and and, and attending different kind of a fancy events so we hoped that they would come when we bring you here so after September, we've held uh, six events and uh, all together close to 400 people been visiting in these uh, pitching, pitching events, uh, 24 startups and four established and big companies. And uh, we've got really, really good uh, feedback from these events. Uh, what else we've done? We've opened a Twitter account. I don't hear any, any of you going like, wow, you opened a Twitter account here. Yeah. I understand that's probably not so revolutionary of achievement to open a Twitter account. But I can tell you, I think it's really, really transparent and good way to spread uh, the word what we expect you maybe to do or how we can ease your, your, your entering um, uh, into our hospital. And for example, we spread, a, spread around, spread out uh, the guidelines and checklist for mobile app developers in the Twitter account. So if you have a mobile app, you want to come and you want to present and suggest that maybe all the university hospitals or, who's, or, or, or one of the university hospitals would use your product, you need to do some kind of a coding that we can fastly and easily implement your mobile app to our platform. So these uh, checklists and guidelines have been distributed through the Twitter account. So, yeah, something has happened. Then yesterday we talked about this clinical entrepreneur program in Finland. So uh, if you, most of you don't know there's only a couple of doctors, but in, in, in general, in the public sector, in non-profit hospital, if you went to work for a company, in the private section, that was really no, no, no. So after working for a couple of months in the private section or for a company, uh, the hospital goes like, there's no way to return. So it, it didn't really, it, didn't really uh, it wasn't very big incentive to go to work for, or help the startups or any other companies because it's hard to come back to work in a hospital. Our work is to help patients. The communities and, and municipalities are paying who's 
to treat the patients, not to innovate. And so that's why that's been a problem. So now we've opened this new program together with TechS, and it's, it's, it's aimed and targeted to healthcare professionals, enabling them to participate in developing, for example, startups products for a couple of months, and then coming back to the hospital. This is a new thing. So what we're trying to do by bringing these pitching events to the biomedicum, uh, being more transparent in, in giving you information what we expect you to do or, or at least try to do and, 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 and fulfill some requirements is also that we want to change the culture by doing all these kind of things, changing the culture in the hospital environment. And uh, uh, then my last section, what's in the pipeline, there's just a couple of examples I went through, but what's in the pipeline, how the future holds, what, what does it look like? So the findery, as I mentioned, was pretty a successful uh, 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 a tryout period of six events, and now we want to go finery Finland. So other university hospitals have, have, have shown uh, their interest to take the same concept, of course, modify that locally, and by doing this, if you present your idea as a startup in one of our events, that will spread to all university hospitals. So it's not who's thing anymore. So we are creating a university ecosystem. So this is really, really great if this will, and when it will work really well in the future. So, so I think this is a great thing. So HealthSpy is helping us out in this process. Hopefully we will start uh, in fall 2017, so in about six months' time. And then another thing, we want to present a new one-key, one-door policy. It doesn't mean that you get one key to get to enter HUS. We want you to have one key to enter all these university hospitals. So what does it mean in practice? In practice, it means that we are going to open an innovation house, hopefully once again by the midsummer 2017. And uh, this innovation house is a platform where once again, uh, if you come there, and you have a startup, you present your idea, then any of the university hospitals can run the pilot and we, we can decide who is the fastest and most proper partner for you to do the pilot or do the study. So this is a unique and exceptional system in the whole world if we can create this kind of a uh, university ecosystem. So we are really trying. And then, you know, a couple of last slides on behalf of you. Uh, uh, you know, people, people, um, oh, first of all, Every one of you hopefully knows Nuna. So, so people are often, all the time asking, can it really happen with who's so complex, giant, uh, bureaucratic organization, takes time and effort, you know, and doctors are really badly behaving and so forth. Uh, but Nuna was started and founded in 2014 together with oncologists. Remember, every, almost every single startup who have succeeded, they have doctors and nurses on board. So this was founded on 2014. And uh, you know, now today is spread all over the world in US and India, awarded throughout the world, and partnered with MSD and other big companies. So my question is, on behalf of you, can you really make it happen together with who's? Uh, and the answer is yes, you can make it happen. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your excellent presentation and also about reminding us about the, the culture in, in HUS, which is very, very important for the <coughs> startups who want to, to work together with, with, with you guys uh, about the, the taking, involving doctors and, and nurses and, and about the academic background and, and also about that health is really a, our human right, and we are, when we are talking about testing and piloting within the hospital context, it's totally different than testing and piloting in, in any other, other, other uh, environments. So, do we have questions or, or comments for, for makeup, please? Yes, please. Oh, no. How did I start up? 
Oh, uh, startup, sorry, yeah, yeah. So we had the Think Company, Helsinki Think Company has been running the business for the last six events. We haven't really figured out how we're going to do it in a nationwide model uh, in the fall 2017. But the idea is that we open, there's a, there's a page, web page, where you can show your interest and ask if you can come and pitch. And then we normally, there's a couple of, startups, you know, lining up there already, but then we try to pick up those ones and create some kind of a, you know, uniform theme for for one event, because previously in the first couple of times we had really different, different, different uh, 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 kind of players in the, in the ballpark and that didn't work so well. So, for example, if you have diabetes startups and we try to gather all them in one event and get the doctors and nurses from diabetic care uh, to the event. And But we will open a web page, so if you want to come and pitch, you will find that. Just stay tuned and check the Twitter account, so we'll inform you. Yeah, yeah excellent. Okay, another question from there. Hello. Uh, how do you motivate nurses and doctors to come to those events? This is really a good question because I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah, we've had six, and in the, maybe in the first one there may there was probably ten doctors and nurses, all of you know, somehow related to you. I'm your friends or something. <laughs> but but you know, I, I, now we've talked with the uh, media people in the hospital, an outside hospital, and we try to get the. I don't know if you if you are aware of the Olka Olka peer support support system in Finland. It's 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 spread really fastly throughout the Finland. And all the nurses and doctors and patients and relatives are really into this kind of a peer support uh, system. So I think we're trying to use the similar kind of approach they use to spread the word. And, uh, uh, but we have work to do to get more and more doctors. Like in this event, we, sh we, w we should have 500 nurses and doctors here. It's definitely a cultural change that we are making yeah. making here, and so it's, it takes some time, but there we can see the movement or, already, so it's it's coming up. Okay, one more question. No, I just want to add to that. that I don't know how it works here in, the, in, the, in the Finland. I'm, I'm a physician in the U.S., and we have the CME system, you know, the continuous medical education. Mm -hmm. So what has worked in some places in the U.S. is to get the, the providers to come to this fascinating event, other than offering coffee and donuts, you know? you have to give them a CME or a credit, so uh, they will, you know, get, you know, the, the bite almost, uh, that, that bait of, of, of going to the event because of the credit they get, but also at the same time they get, you know, injected with this passion for, wow, this is great innovation, and they start, you know, uh, joining on the, the, the movement. Yeah, this would be a great, great solution for us as well. But in Finland, you know, this, we have the system, if you graduated in 1977, you don't have to do anything after that because you will be a doctor until you die. You know, I mean, no one is asking, do you, can you even read anymore? But, you know, I mean, you're a doctor, you can stay as a doctor. But we are trying to change this as well, that you need to take the CMOs in Finland as well. But it's been previously like, ah, you know, you did once your exam, you're good to go. Yeah, it is. Incentives are very important as well. Yeah, that's a good point. Thank okay, you. now we will move on.